Good afternoon, all. Uh, welcome to Cloud Operational Data at your fingertips. Hi, I'm Gerald. I'm the director of cloud for uh, director of cloud at Walmart for I manage the private cloud. Hi, I'm Sukesh Behera, and uh, I'm staff engineer cloud at Walmart. Hi, I'm Tom, uh, staff engineer at Walmart Labs. Yeah, in this top. In this session, we'll be going through the in-house product which we developed, it's called Galaxy. And the topics which we are covering are the life before, our gal before Galaxy, and what was happening during an outage, and what is Galaxy, and so we should be going through the architecture, and Gerald will be going an overview and listing the features of Galaxy. Yeah, as this uh, picture explains, this was happening for us before Galaxy. Uh, when our customer come to us and they will be asking a lot of queries to us. Uh, initially, they will be asking uh, small things like uh, capacity, how much capacity we have, how many clouds we have, all those things they will be asked. So once those things are cleared, they will be asking more details about cloud. How is the overcommit? How much overcommit we are doing? How, uh, what type of hardware you are using? Uh, how much hardware you have? and how can he spread his application across multiple clouds. Yeah. In our case, we are a short staff team and we were not able to fulfill all their customer queries, which can be easily done through a uh, product like Galaxy. And during an outage happens, uh, when we have double digit number of clouds and single digit number of resource to working on that, uh, when customer reports say issue to our NOC, our NOC system will pay page to all the key teams across our company. And at that point, the on-call person who is in our team need to look into each and every piece of cloud. Uh, also, at that time, the person will be having very minimum information regarding the cloud, uh, regarding the impact. So he need to look into all the pieces. Normally, he'll be going through the cloud services in the beginning. Uh, he'll be checking all the endpoints uh, up and running. Uh, and the cloud components like Nova and Neutron is good. Uh, then whether Rabbit is accepting and sending messages to all the custom, all the consumers, and uh, Galera is in sync. Uh, once the cloud uh, uh, components are verified, then he need to look into the hardware side, where all the computes are up, SSHable, pingable, pingable within the SLA which we defined. Uh, and in, in our case, we had 60 plus clouds, he need to do this repeatedly for multiple, uh, across multiple endpoints. How quickly he can trash that, uh, that uh, in that case. Um, and also during a P1 call, that person needs to frequently update the status back to the uh, call. In most of the cases we have seen, there will be an issue for, uh, there will be a pattern for the issue, like, uh, one portion of the data center is not reachable or a particular rack is down. So how quickly we can find out all those things, whether there's a pattern for that issue so that he can fix it fast and report the issue fast back. Uh, in some cases, applications, uh, the, when some customer report an issue, the resource need to look into how, how well distributed they are. Is there a bad neighbor sitting along with that customer which can cause the issue? And if, if we found an issue in cloud, how quickly he can recover. Once he recover, he need to go back to each the, all the cases again and do this checks and def declare the cloud health. Uh, at last, we want to show all the cloud data which we have to our customer so that it's, it's well transparent for them also. Keeping all these things in mind, we developed a product called Galaxy. And Galaxy is a multi-cloud validation tool it's aimed to minimize the main time to detect any issues across all OpenStack clouds. Uh, currently, it's integrated to OpenStack clouds, and it can be extended to other public cloud providers. It's a Python-based application. It's already integrated to all our uh, OpenStack clouds. And we are using this tool right now to do all the checks and validation and declare the health of cloud across multiple regions. Architecture. Okay, so uh, first uh, I'll talk a little bit about the idea behind this design. How did we uh, come up with this? 
To solve our problem, uh, we thought about uh, Horizon. Horizon has the capability to manage your instances and cloud services through the UI. But we realized Horizon doesn't support or accommodate multi-cloud or multi-regions. And given the size of uh, cloud infra we have and the number of clouds we have, uh, during an issue or during a crisis, it is practically in, like it's not possible to log into like so many Horizon dashboards and or keep those like 50 or 60 plus tabs open in your browser and get the data fast and like reliably, right? So we thought about a solution. We thought about our own solution. We basically wanted to build a backend which can uh, abstract uh, the APIs from n number of clouds, and it can uh, give the output as a single API. So we are using a Python Flask framework for that, Python Flask API. And uh, so what it does, like in Galaxy, we have like so many different validations we are going to cover in next slides. So for each validation or each check, we are creating an endpoint and we are masking those endpoints together to talk to a specific cloud endpoint. So we have implemented uh, parallelism. Uh, actually, when we started first, we were doing multi-threading. So uh, for example, let's say we are trying to do a heavy operation or ex uh, expensive operation like get instances. For example, in a cloud, we have like few thousands of VMs running. And if the cloud admin wants to get all the list of VMs uh, across like 50 or 60 clouds, that operation is really huge. And it takes a hit on CPU. The CPU performance was going down. So for that, we got rid of that and we implemented parallelism. And it worked well. And we were able to scale up to like 60 plus clouds. And uh, the way it works is like whenever the user is trying to uh, hit on a check against a cloud, it will make a call to the Python uh, backend and it will interact with the cloud, respective cloud endpoint, and it will get the data and feed it back to the UI. The next part comes the UI. UI, we have tried to uh, keep it very simple and standardized. We are using jQuery with Ajax and JavaScript, and we have CSS and uh, HTML too. Uh, the next important thing is uh, RBAC, role-based access control. So for Galaxy, we have two different types of users. One is the cloud admin, and the second one is the regular users, app users. So for cloud admin, we need to have all the privileges, right, to make sure the cloud is up and running, and we can validate that. But the app user, they may not need to have access to all those like important flows, right? So they just care like when there is an issue, they just care that, okay, give me the data which shows how my app is doing in that cloud. They don't care about like how many instances you are running, what is the status of your hypervisor, they don't care about those things. So to solve that, we had to uh, create different roles for admin and different roles for app user. And we have made it uh, pretty standardized uh, because we have integrated with uh, AD or LDAP. It can be done both. And uh, the cloud configuration means, let's say we have like n number of or 50 or 60 clouds, right? For each cloud config, we have made it uh, really uh, simple and loosely coupled so that uh, if tomorrow you want to take out few clouds or you want to remove few clouds or you want to add some new clouds, right? Each time we do that, we don't want you to like go and touch the important part of the code. Instead of that, we have kept it separate, like configuration based. Whenever you want to like add a new cloud, just go and add the new block for the cloud or you want to take it out, just take it out and deploy. The same thing goes for the checks also. Checks means, let's say we have like a, a get instances check or check hypervisor check, right? So for each check, we have created a separate module. If you want to remove a check or if you want to add a new check, you can do it pretty like fast and in easy way. And the security, uh, actually we are like uh, uh, encrypting all the username and password for like any of these users or admin user, and all the endpoints are SSL supported. So the next thing is, uh, uh, that's interesting thing. Actually, Galaxy works with any version or releases of OpenStack. So given the size of infra we have, or like the number of clouds we have, it's uh, 
it's not possible to like uh, whenever a time comes to upgrade those clouds, right? We cannot do it on the at the same time all the clouds to a, a newer release without impacting the customers. So we try to uh, do it in a rolling manner or in a graceful way. So during that process, we have to make sure the tool works with each different version of it, right? We cannot say, okay, it works with Pike, it doesn't work with Newton, or we don't support Juno or Liberty, anything. So we thought about it and we have done it, we have integrated and it works well. So in our production, we have like, uh, at the time, currently we are running like Liberty and Newton and Pike. So Galaxy works with all three seamlessly. The next one is, uh, uh, as you know, like these days, people are moving towards uh, hybrid cloud. That means both public and private. So we cannot provide something or we cannot build a tool which works just with private, right? So we thought about it and we have made this design like in such a way, like plug and play. It can work with both Azure or any other cloud providers or GCP. So the next, uh, how does it work? It, this basically shows like uh, how an user can do a check or they can like run a validation. So the user logs in with their credentials, username, password, and when they do, it validates against the AD or LDAP server, and the UI comes like this. So in this UI, you can see there are like two different First one is the validation. These are the checks we are giving. These are the basic checks we have. And on the right side, these are the clouds which we, ha we have now running and Galaxy is integrated with those clouds. So it's pretty simple. You just have to select the check and you just have to select the, you can do single cloud or multi-cloud too. And when you hit submit, so it is going to, in backend, it is going to make an Ajax call to the Python Flask UI backend. And the Python code, it is going to interact with whatever cloud you have selected. It is going to talk to those endpoints. It is going to get the response, and the response will be reformatted in JSON format, and it is going to be rendered back to the UI. So uh, as you can see, this is like the workflow of the design is pretty simple, because we our goal was to make sure uh, we make a platform or we make a tool which is very simple, easy, and useful for our cloud admins or our regular users who are going to consume it. And uh, we have achieved it and we have made our like support life more sophisticated with this. So now I'm going to hand it over to Gerald. He's going to uh, go through the Galaxy overviews. Thank you. So we will go through the Galaxy overview. So in the Galaxy overview is basically the different functionality I'll walk you through. So we're gonna cover the overall status. So that's the main page. Uh, when you log in, you pretty much get the health of all the clouds. Uh, the second one is single cloud or multi-cloud. So if you pick one cloud, uh, you'll get the health of one cloud. If you pick 10 clouds, you'll get the health of 10 clouds. Uh, we'll go through the hypervisor summary where you can actually physically see the rack view of your racks. Uh, the app slash VM distribution, which is how your VMs and apps are actually distributed across the racks. Uh, we'll show you that physical view as well. Uh, VM IP search, so as you guys also work on OpenStack and operate clouds, you'll know many times the uh, customers or the app teams will come and say, hey, this is my IP, can you tell me what's wrong with my VM? And hence we created IP search, so you can just put the IPs in, multiple IPs, and go look for the VMs all over the cloud, and in one hit of a button, you can get the results back. Uh, VM boot is basically testing a VM boot for any of the clouds through different ways, which we'll cover. Uh, get instances is basically all the information about a VM or all the information about all the VMs in the clouds. Uh, push notification is, you know, we do maintenance, and we add racks, take racks, upgrades. We can send no notification to all our customers with a click of one button. And uh, the last one is the Codra IP uh, utilization, which is, uh, again, a famous problem we all have where, you know, Codra is getting over, how much Codra is left, IPs are getting over, do we need to add more VLANs, we do we need to get more IPs? So we track all that. So this is when you log into Galaxy. This is the first view you get. So as soon as you log in, 
uh, it basically, the first column over here is all the cloud names. And uh, then we cover the key components of OpenStack, like compute, uh, which is like NOAA, Neutron, schedulers, the Linux agents, and all that stuff, right? So you basically want to see all green when you log in. If you don't see green, there's some issue somewhere. You know that there's an issue over here. So this is a good view. Uh, all green is great. So this is your overall health, right? Now, beyond the overall health of the cloud, you want to know if somebody is uh, a VM or app owner saying, hey, you know, my app is running slow. We are seeing slowness in the cloud. We are seeing slowness somewhere. You want to check the APIs, how quickly are they responding. So this is basically information for all your APIs. Uh, and immediately, if you see these going high, you know there's slowness. This, is, this view is talking about the single view or a multiple view. So basically, you can select one or multiple clouds, and you'll get the health, the de detailed health about your key components again. So it talks about RabbitMQ. It uh, talks about your uh, neutron agents. Uh, and if you see over here, you'll see there are like 308 uh, compute nodes. 305 are alive and three are down. In the next one here, you see, so this is about the NOAA, right? So if you see there are 305, six disabled. But in the previously, you see in the three that were down, you just click on the down and you can actually see which ones are down. So it gives you all that info. Uh, you can also get the information about your IPs over here uh, for the various different uh, networks we have added. So the red means you're pretty much exhausted on those uh, on that network. Uh, yellow is you're coming close, and you have to add uh, network lines. Basically, you don't want to be at a point where all your IPs are exhausted and nobody can spin up a VM. So these two views give you the health of a cloud or multiple clouds. This view is the rack view. This is literally the physical rack view of your racks across all the clouds. We have shrunk it a little bit down, so you're seeing it like really thin, straight lines. But these are literally all our hypervisors. Now, this view took a lot of time for us to get along because we used to get this question on and off, like, hey, with such a large cloud, how many nodes are out of rotation? How many nodes are down for maintenance? How many nodes are broken? Uh, is there a node where you know you have lost network? Is there a top of rack switch down? And we have around 60 plus clouds and thousands and thousands of nodes. So it is not possible to remember or update spreadsheets or confluence pages that hey, I have X number of nodes in maintenance, X number of nodes down due to a switch, and so forth. So we came up with this view where if anybody wants a report, hey, click on this and you can literally see it. But then uh, we were like, okay, we need to make it more usable. So we added the color coding to it. So on the top, you see we have disable and up. So disable and up is, you know, you have a SSD, one of the SSD is gone. It's in read-only mode. But there are some VMs where we all have these, which are the pets. Uh, they want the data. The VM is still up and running. The machine is up and running. But they cannot replace immediately. So what we will do is we will disable that machine. The VM is up. The user can keep going. He can migrate his data at his convenience. But we want, it won't let any new VMs be created over there. So we give the customer time to move out. Uh, the other thing what we do is, if you see it's like in a sequence, we purposefully disable a bunch of nodes. Uh, you would say, why would you do that, right? And the reason is we have some aggregates. We have high performance flavors, high IO flavors, general compute flavors. Some flavors are of high demand. And I know that, hey, you know, after you put X number of nodes into rotation, in a week, two weeks, maybe a down the line in this month, they are going to come back and ask for more. And we all know how long it takes to get hardware, right? You just don't get hardware like, hey, 
I want hardware and you get it tomorrow. It takes sometimes weeks, sometimes months, depends on how fast you can get provisioning. So we disable these and when the need is there, we throw them into rotation, customer has his compute. Uh, then you have the yellow ones. So the yellow ones, we have a job that runs every night. And what we want to do is, we want to go and look for the machine that's in degraded state, that's in critical state. And before it fails unplanned during the day, we want to go catch it. And we will power it down. And we create an automated ticket and everything and send it to the hardware team and say, hey, this machine, the SSD is bad, the DIM is bad, the CPU is bad. Go fix it, and they go fix it. So it's automatically powered down, creates tickets, sends the information what is bad. Hardware team goes, fixes it, brings it back. When the hardware team re repairs it, uh, it notifies us, like, hey, this machine is good to go. So we run checks, it's all automated, the checks run, it'll go perform the check and bring it back into rotation, it turns into green. So this enables us to like know the complete site of our farm, like how is it running, what's happening. Now you see the red ones. There are a few red, right? So let's say you lose a top of rack switch, or let's say you have like three layers of switches, or you have a least point, depends whatever model you have. If you lose a rack, top of rack, this entire rack turns red, because NOAA cannot hit it. If you lose, let's say a second layer <laughs> of switching, or a leaf, or a spine, and multiple racks are connected to it, Multiple racks turn red. So I can just go back up to the NetInz team and say like, hey, network guys, cloud two, rack 152 is gone, rack 157 is gone, uh, 167 is gone, cloud three, rack 151 is gone, and in a matter of minutes or seconds, I can tell them exactly where my problem is. So it saves a lot of mean time to detect, mean time to recover for us. So, and this is a few, but you can like pull this for all 50 clouds or 60 clouds, how many you have will come up. Then came the point that, hey, you have this view which is really nice, but uh, in this yellow box that is down, can you tell me what apps are getting affected? And we were like, oops, that's right. So we need to show what apps are getting affected in the red box or in the yellow boxes. So we made that clickable. You click that and you can see exactly what apps are affected. Uh, you know what things are gonna get affected, you know what app teams have to move out from there. Uh, then came along, they were like, uh, okay, you know the apps in this hypervisor, but how many VMs do I have in this cloud? So we were like, okay. We'll show you how many VMs you have in this cloud. So we color coded the apps on the hypervisors and you can select up to 10, five or 10 apps. I, I think it's around 10 right now. And this helps us a lot because we overcome it. You have chatty apps, you have chatty neighbors within the hypervisors. One guy is heavy on CPU, the other guy is heavy on CPU, one guy is heavy on data traffic, your NICs are getting blocked, you know exactly in how many hypervisors they're sitting with each other, and you gotta go replace those VMs. There's one, you can go manually replace the VMs, uh, the other way is you have machine learning or automation to automatically replace those VMs. So that's another thing we'll push out in the next couple of releases we are actually working on doing it automatedly, but right now, we can exactly tell you which app is sitting side of which app on a hypervisor and who needs to move. Uh, this mostly even comes useful uh, when our clouds are like 50 or 60 percent full, uh, and you certainly go and add a rack. Uh, you certainly add more nodes to the top of the rack or the bottom, wherever you have space. What happens is the scheduler will come and he'll look to place your uh, VMs. The rest of the racks, the nodes are full. So what happens is you land up with an application, let's say he's done a 50 VM deployment, at least five VMs will land up in that same node. And then you have another app comes and he does a heavy deployment of another 10, 50 VMs. Now you have one app with five VMs, another app with five VMs. 
And some of our hypervisors will take up to 60 VMs. Some take five, some take 10, depending on the uh, aggregates we have set. But when you have a hypervisor with 50 VMs and these two heavy hitters are come with 10 and 10 VMs in it, it creates a lot of chaos. So you want to know exactly. And if you don't have these kind of views, it is super cumbersome to go across 50 clouds or in every single cloud, wherever they're deployed, with a app or with multiple apps and try to make sure you separate all of them because you can't just tell everybody, start replacing. It doesn't solve the problem because you can replace and the likelihood of you guys landing up together, the two apps landing up together is very likely again. So this way you can really separate them and it's helped us for at least two or three holidays since we have this up and running. Uh, and then the apps are happy, but we want to automate it to the next level where we don't have to actually sit and look at it. And they, so nice we know there's more than two VMs in one hypervisor, it'll automatically move it around. So uh, this helps us. The next uh, view is the hypervisor status. So let's say, you know, hey, you don't like the graphical view, but you want more details about your clouds. So go put in the number of clouds you want, and it will, like, it will exactly tell you, like, this is the clouds you have. This is the status. They are all enabled. So you can just put in your search over there, like enabled, and it'll show you all enabled or disabled. It'll show you all disabled. It'll tell you the host names. It'll tell you the CPUs you have, how many cores, how much overcome it, all the stuff is in there. So you can export all that data, and if you need it, awesome. If you want to just query, you can query, and it's quick search up there. Uh, the other view is the high, uh, hypervisor utilization. So this, again, uh, goes up. Like So your management says, like, hey, you bought so many racks, and where's all my money being spent? So you have all the detailed view right here. You can say, hey, this cloud has 235, this has 300. These are so many enabled, so many are disabled, so many vCPUs are in, so many physical cores are running, so many VMs are running on these machines. What's the utilization? All that stuff is there. So you can say, hey, my clouds are running 50%, 60%. Uh, you obviously don't want to be 100% because then there's no auto-replace going to work. So you have some buffer and you can move stuff around. But Basically, it gives you your utilization reports where you can, the upper management, the folks up don't even need to come to you anymore. They can log in and see for themselves, right, where the money is being spent. Uh, this is the VM IP search. So, uh, you know, VM is bad, caching VM is bad, database VM is bad, uh, or a VM is bad and he's a new app user. He doesn't know how to go in and we have a pass tool called OneOps. Uh, which is also open sourced. Uh, some of the users, the new users, or maybe an old user, or the user doesn't know how to look up the host name or the VM or which cloud he is, he is in. But he has the IP. They all know. You know how to get the IP. So they, they just ping us the IP and they're like, hey, can you tell me where's, help me with this VM? And we have no idea in which cloud this VM is. Like, with the number of clouds we have, how do you keep going and looking for it? So we build this. You can put in as many number of IPs you want by comma, or actually space, I think. Sorry, it's space. And uh, it gives you all the details of your VM. So it'll tell you like which cloud you are, who's the owner of this instance, uh, is it reachable, is it up, is it enabled, uh, which org it belongs to, everything. So uh, it gives you the info of your VM. Now, furthermore, if the app owner is like, hey, but you know, I have issues in this VM and I want to go and troubleshoot. Uh, we don't give them admin access to the cloud, so they can't go look. So we put this little button called Diagnostics, and it basically calls the V3 VM Diagnostic API, and it gives you all the tap interface and all the info that we would normally see as cloud operators. Now they can see with the click of a button, so we don't need to give them admin access. and. Uh, this is all running from Nova, so we have not written anything uh, specific to Walmart or specific to us in here. So this enables the users to go further along and have a deeper look into the VMs. Uh, the other questions we get is like, hey, you know, I cannot spin up a VM in Cloud One, And we are like, what's the error you're getting? Oh, no, it's just not working. OK, uh, is it not working because of what? 
So, and we'll get, no, it doesn't come up. So we were like, okay, we build this, where this goes and spins up a VM directly, basically does a NOAA boot in OpenStack. So it doesn't go through the pass layer through one ops, it goes straight into OpenStack. You can go by flavor, you can go by which network you want to pick, because we have segregated our, our tenants by network, some of them. Uh, you can pick which image you want. You want Red Hat, you want Ubuntu, you want CentOS, which availability zone. Or if you do not know any of the above, or you don't care about any of the above, you can just say, spin up a single instance, and boom, it spins up. If you spin up an instance, cloud is working. Back to your pass layer. Figure out where it's broken. Are you, are you even doing the right functions at the pass layer to spin up a VM? Uh, this is mostly even useful when there is an issue, uh, when there's an outage call and people say like, oh, I cannot access this cloud, I cannot go here, I cannot go there. Simple, just go spin up an instance, it does it in like five, ten, ten seconds, and you're good. This is get instances. Uh, this is basically the information of all your VMs. So another common question one gets is like, hey, how many VMs do I have of a certain org? Or, hey, this CTO org, or this VP org, or this app team, how many instances, where are they spread across the clouds, et cetera, et cetera. All the data over here. So you can go by cloud, network, tenant, platform name, assembly and all is basically are the one ops lingo. So if you use one ops, you, have, you need an assembly. Uh, and again, this is compressed. Uh, there are much more columns as we go wide. So you'll have the OS type, uh, the VM name, and there's a whole lot more information along the line. But we pretty much again do a NOAA call and get all this info. You can again export it and slice and dice the data uh, and use it for your reporting purpose. But for us, it's basically, hey, if we have app A, how many VMs app A has? Where is app A spread? And are they actually even... Uh, up and running or are they down? This is the tenant quota utilization. So we ideally want to see, so you get the cloud, you get the tenant name, you get the number of cores they have allocated. So like this guy is doing good, 36 cores and he's using 24. But you see this guy, he's got 40 and he's using zero. So it gives you the percentage. And again, this comes down to like, hey, where's my money being spent and where am I actually not using these services? Because all the zeros that you see are not good, right? Because your bot compute, they're powered, they're running, but you have allocated quota and nobody's using it. So we have a team called the Sharpa team and they reclaim all this quota back and they're like, hey, if you guys are not using it, it's coming back because we want to give it to app teams and customers that are actually using uh, the capacity. So capacity is always in short because app teams are growing, new apps are coming online. Uh, we're getting more customers, and all our websites are running out of OpenStack and part of the stores as well. So this is the push notification. So we have done a bunch of upgrades. Uh, we do OS, patching, multiple upgrades, OpenStack upgrades. So as all of you know, it's the same old process, right? You got to inform your customer that you're doing a maintenance or you're doing any kind of activity on the cloud that may or may not affect you. And then comes the point like, hey, how do you contact all these guys and how do you send this email and notification? And if you put it up on all these boards, they still don't read it. So uh, we, we, got, we built a system where it will basically extract all the VM owners. So you get the email IDs of all the VM owners and then at the bottom, you can even add distribution lists and everything in here. So like you want to send it to the entire team apart from the VM owner. If the VM owner left the company, you can still add distribution lists. So if one guy is not there, the rest of the team is still there or somebody else is there or some managers and uh, pretty much write your content over here and hit send and boom, it goes away rather than trying to do it from your own inbox and getting spammed. Uh, so this is the hypervisor operation view. So this is one of the admin views where the user doesn't get this. So let's say we know there's a hard drive that's broken. Or let's say that we know that the root disk is going to read only more, or we have to take down a node, uh, which, is, uh, which has to be done in the day before our automation kicks in, or for whatever manual reasons, we need to bring this down. 
Uh, you can pretty much pick any cloud you want. Uh, go pick the host name, uh, and it'll say status up enabled. You can pretty much like disable it from here, and then put the reason in, and it'll save the reason. So even if you log into, uh, if the users don't go in from here, and let's say Sukesh or Tom logs into OpenStack from the back, they will still see the reason, and they're like, hey, this node was taken down for maintenance, or it was taken down for some reason, or they're doing a POC on it, or something of that sort. So uh, you can still go from the back and see the day info, or you can just take it down from here. And let's say you have to take down multiple nodes in different clouds. You don't need to log into different clouds. Just pick the nodes away here, and you can take down uh, the nodes from here. OK. So I'd like to one more important and interesting thing. So all these checks, whatever Gerald covered, so everything, all the data, we get real time. Because whenever we have some kind of issue or something, we just need the data or the report at that moment, right? So for that, uh, if you noticed in the architecture uh, we covered, we don't have any data store or database in it. Because there were like two elements to it. First thing is we didn't want to introduce any extra dependency. Otherwise, we need to make sure the database is up and running all the time, and it has the connectivity with Galaxy. The second thing is just because we wanted everything real time. So it basically does the processing. It gets the request and does the processing in memory, and it gets the result. So one thing to remember, this tool is purely a break glass tool, meaning if you think there's an issue in the cloud, or if you want to go see data, you go hit those buttons. These are heavy queries, so you don't want to like keep hitting it every minute, otherwise you'll bring down the cloud. So the whole aim of this tool is for an operator uh, to go in, get data from multiple clouds. Uh, we have single digit number of engineers, uh, double digit number of clouds. You want to be quick, you want to reduce your mean time to detect issues, and you want to get faster on mean time to recovery, plus we want to see how cascading the issue is. Is it cascading beyond the cloud or is it out of the cloud? So the major issue, uh, the ma main reason we build this tool is not only to like, hey, there's an issue in the cloud, but whenever there is an issue in the company, an app team reports an issue, uh, as Tom mentioned earlier, we have a knock that sets up a call and you know the key teams uh, paged out and they jump on. Everybody needs to like give their status, right? Because everybody wants to, uh, they, they want a status from everyone saying like, hey, network is up, cloud is up, database is up. The whole aim we build this around that is like, hey, we can give statuses really quickly and say cloud is doing well. So that way we do not uh, log into 50 clouds and say like, hey, hang on, I still need to check this, I still need to check this, I still need to check this. The other part is it helps us to look at the blast radius. So if a app is affected for whatever reason, we know where all he is. If a app is affected, or let's say if Neutron is affected or we lose a tor, we know exactly what's the cascading effect of the blast radius of it. So this was more of a tool built uh, to get your health checks quickly, to know the status of the clouds, to find things where they're broken and move quick uh, rather than trying to triage issues, just simply triage issues. So what this did was it made us happy because previously we were like frantically everybody jumping on the keyboards and going at it and now, and you know, when there's an issue, uh, you can easily fat finger something and make things more worse. Uh, this keeps it a bit safer where you don't have to like get stressed out, click, 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 and you're done. Uh, we would also like to thank Sorojit Roy and Giridhar Bujunga. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, they are not with us, they couldn't be with us due to personal reasons, but uh, they have spent hours and hours uh, on the code and development for this tool, uh, which we are still developing. So big thank you and big shout out to them too. Uh, if you'd like any questions, feel free to contact us. And thank you. So we are open for questions. Thank you.